here this morning. Amen. Amen. I'm certainly glad and honored to be another part of a wonderful service this morning. Amen. We just want to do everything we can to make the most of our time. Amen. I want to remember to pray for uh, Brother Braden Savage's aunt. She's had a heart attack. The doctors don't know if they'll be able to do open heart surgery because her arteries being small. So I ask that we would just remember them during this time in that situation. Amen. As we uh, go to prayer, let's just sing that song, Holy Spirit, Rain Down. Amen. We need another touch from him this morning. Amen. We enjoyed last night. Amen. But we say, Lord, this morning, I just want you, your presence to rain down again. Amen. Amen. If you have a need, let's just lift it to him together as we worship. Holy Spirit, rain. Jesus, that no matter how low you, you go, 
It's never too far, Lord Jesus, that you can bring us back. Show them your mercy, we pray, Lord Jesus. Whatever happens, we'll give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. this time for their special amen if you have some questions in the corner of your mind traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find reflections of your past seem to face you every day there's one thing I know for sure, that Jesus is the way, and Jesus is the answer for your life today. Above him there's no other, Jesus is the way, Jesus is the answer for your life today. That you think you cannot climb I know your skies that look so dark The sun will never shine But in case you don't know The word of God is true Everything he's promised I know he will do for you I know that Jesus is the end
that uh, those uh, youth camp t-shirts are going very quickly. If you haven't uh, got one yet and you would like to um, get a t-shirt, please see Brother Joe Adams. The proceeds of those are going to the missions work in Japan. Uh, and if you want one, make sure you get that soon before they're gone. Amen. So just remember that at this time. As they make their way, let's just sing that little verse. Amen. I surrender all. And I Surrender all. I surrender all. All to be my blessed Savior. Amen. Amen. If you haven't truly done that. This morning is your morning for that. Amen. Just make that. 
that in your prayer this morning. And I surrender. Say, Lord, I just want you to come by my way. Search every room, search every nook. Every part of me, Lord. My blessed Savior, I surrender all. Testimony before we sang. Um, when we got here, um, my back started hurting really bad, and I could hardly sit on anything. It really hurt. And the other night, I asked Brother Josh Bennett to pray for me, and it stopped hurting, and I just want to thank God for that, because I can sit and it doesn't hurt. You 
test.
chains are gone I've been set free My God, my Savior He's ransomed me And like a flood His mercy reigns Unending love Amazing grace Oh, my chains are gone And I've been set free My God, my testimony? Amen. 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 Is that your testimony? Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but that's a good feeling. You say, I'm no longer a slave. Amen. Amen. Let's just worship the Lord as we turn the order of the service over. The splendor of a king.
your voice and sing it now. He's the name above all names. not only is he omnipotent but he's omnipresent he's here he's omniscient brother Brown said that he's omniscient so he knows what you have need of he said he's omnipotent so he has the power to provide anything that you do need and he said he's omnipresent so he's here to meet your need amen so I believe God's here this morning amen let's just bow our heads if you have a need something special you'd like the Lord to do for you, why don't you just slip your hand up to him and make it known to him this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just bow our heads and our hearts before you this morning. Lord, we come in humility. Lord, yet we come boldly before your throne of grace. Lord, having great confidence, Lord, that the way has been made. And Lord, we've, we've been given access Lord, that we can come, Lord. Lord, we can bring our petitions. We can lift up our needs before you, God. And Lord, we know that through Calvary and the price that was paid there, we're coming through the blood. And Lord, that all things are possible to them that believe. And God, we know that faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word of God. And Lord, our faith has been energized in these services, Lord. I believe, God, that the, the faith of these young people that are standing here before us has just been moving up and coming up every service. And Lord, until the atmosphere is beginning to change and we're beginning to realize, Lord, coming to a realization that, the, that you're here and you're present. and Lord, that you're still the same. Lord, you never change, but Hebrews 13 and 8 is becoming a reality. That you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, I pray that you would just meet every need that's in the building this morning. Lord, we know, Lord, that you're more than able. Lord, you can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or even think. Lord, I pray that you'd just meet every need according to your riches and glory. Help us, God, as we, Lord, look into your word. We know that, as a prophet would say, anybody that has the ability to read can open the pages of the Bible and read the words. But God, we need you to come. Lord, and break the bread of life to us. Lord, we don't want it just to be words that we read off of a page. But God, we want the reality of that word to come into our hearts, Lord. We want the God of this word. Lord, we want the quickening power of the Holy Spirit to just drop down. And Lord, quicken the word to our hearts, Lord, until it will become... Lord, a reality in this service. Lord, I pray that you would grant it. Take full control. May you have preeminence. Lord, as we just surrender ourselves into your hands. 
We ask it, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you'd take your Bibles with us this morning, I uh, would like to turn to the book of Proverbs, the 25th chapter, and read one verse of Scripture there, and then I'll have you turn also, uh, read a couple verses out of the book of Psalms, and just greet you this morning, and I mean, enjoyed the service last night. Amen. I tell you, God's so good, and there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Proverbs 25 and verse 28, just one verse of scripture here. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. If you would, turn with me to the book of Psalms in the 18th chapter and the second verse. Psalms 18 and verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I'd like to read one more place uh, out of Psalms, Psalms 125. I'll be reading verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. May the Lord just add his blessings to the reading of his word, and you can have your seats. I'd like to uh, take my thought out of that verse, of, out of Proverbs there. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls. Uh, you'll find that in the scripture there's that God would compare his people or, or God would compare uh, uh, men with a city in many different places. You'll find it all through the scripture. Uh, we know even in the, uh, we've, we have been given the revelation of seven church ages, but you know the uh, there were seven uh, actual churches that were in seven actual cities, and that city represented an entire age, and the city had certain characteristics and certain uh, you know uh, things of that that uh, about that city that would represent uh, the characteristics of a of an entire age uh, that would that would come. So God compares men with cities through the scripture and you can even you see it all through the scripture jesus even said that you're the light of the world a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid and you find that there was two cities in the in the scripture that uh that you can trace all through the bible and one of them would be represented uh the powers of satan and the other would be represented as a city of god and and so we know that that is Babylon and Jerusalem. And, and you see that Babylon is known as the seat of Satan. It's known of, and, and every spirit, every idol, that, and uh, every uh, false god and false religion come out of the city of Babylon. Amen. But yet there is a Jerusalem. And we see that it's known as the city of truth. It's known as the city of peace. Amen. It's the city of God. And, and even when John saw it coming down out of heaven, speaking of the new Jerusalem that is to come, he said it come down as a bride adorned for her husband. So, amen, even John, when he saw a city, he was seeing a bride. Amen. So we know that cities represent people. And, and so with that in mind this morning, I want you to th consider what 
uh, Solomon is saying that he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down and without walls. So we want to know what does that mean because, and to understand that, we have to understand that we're a triune being. We're body, we're spirit, and we're soul. And so we, we see Brother Brown was said like this in works is faith expressed. He said the outside can reason. He said, you take a man. You say, well, I know I'm not supposed to commit adultery. But you know that then the Spirit tells me I shouldn't commit adultery. But you see, way down in there is still that thing in there. See, it'll kind of govern around. And you better watch it. But when it's directed from the inside, it throws all of the rest of it together. See, that's the guidepost. That's the control tower, the inside of the inside. The soul controls the spirit, and the spirit controls the body. Is that right? So on an outside whitewash don't make any difference. Them religious people back there, Paul called them white wall, whited walls and so forth, and they were outwardly just in every way a believer, but on the inside. Amen. What's the Bible say? They, amen, they had whited walls, but the inside of them were full of dead men's bones. And so Brother Ram is showing that, amen, that's why, amen, we can't just have just a, 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 you know, a whitewash. We can't just have, just come down and, you know, get a little something on our flesh or amen even many times the holy spirit pour out it'll fall upon your flesh it can even anoint your spirit amen brother brown said you could even shout you could even speak in tongues you could do many things amen but you leave with the same desires that you come with and you walk away with the same problems that you had before and many times people get discouraged and they wonder, you know, I thought that things was going to be different. Amen. The problem is it didn't change from within. It just never went deep enough. You understand? Because there is something that's controlling you this morning. And you're being controlled from the inside. And Brother Brown said the soul controls the spirit and the spirit controls the body. Is that all right? Amen. So we see without a new birth. A man has no rule over his spirit. And a man that has no rule over his spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Now, a city without walls, especially in the Bible times, when they would build a city, they would put walls around that city. It wasn't for decoration. It wasn't for looks. It wasn't for, you know, that they could have a nicer city than the next. It was all about fortification. It was a wall of defense. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'll just make this clear before we go any further. There's a lot of people building walls. Amen. But they're building the wrong kind of walls with the wrong kind of mortar. Amen. They're using untempered mortar. Their walls will never hold. And they're building them for the wrong reason. A lot of churches build walls. Amen. But they're not building walls to keep the devil out. They're building walls to keep the people in. And they're just trying to fence in. Amen. Trying to stop a move of God. Amen. That's not the kind of wall I'm talking about. But I'm talking about a wall that's built around the children of God. Amen. That'll be a defense against the enemy. And so we see that a man that has no rule over his spirit is like a city. So God is comparing it with a city without walls. And a city without walls has no defense. There's nothing to stop the enemy from coming in. And that's why when you don't, we, we see that uh, when a city is broken down, the walls are broken down in a city. The next thing that happens in that city is the city is taken into captivity or death. Amen. We see that even in the Bible in 2 Kings chapter 25, Israel, because of sin, was overtaken. And we find that in the, the Bible says in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, uh, uh, that King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, come uh, and, the, and his captain, the captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon unto Jerusalem. And he burnt the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem. And every great man's house was burnt with fire. And all the army of the Chaldees that were with the captain of the guard broke down the walls of Jerusalem round about. And the rest of the people that were left in the city and the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babylon with the remnant of the multitude did Nebuchadnezzar the ca or uh, uh, this other man, the captain of the guard, carried away. So when the walls fell, they went into captivity. 
Because they had no defense. That's why you even see on the other side of it, on the positive side, when Joshua and the children of Israel went into the promised land, they, the first thing they run into was a walled city. It was a stronghold. Amen. And the first thing God had to do for them to claim possession of the land was to tear down the walls. But you find, amen, that when God tore down the walls, then the children of Israel went in the city and destroyed the enemy. Because when the walls are, are tore down, there's no defense. Is that right? So you see, amen, the weakest place. Now, I want to just build a little bit, and then I'm going to preach. I brought my preaching shoes this morning, and I hope y'all come to help me. Amen. Amen. But just to lay a little bit of foundation, the weakest place in a walled city is the gate. But, but yet the walls have to have gates because there has to be a way in and a way out. So it's very, you have to have the gate, but yet that's a weak point in the wall. And that's why that was the place that was most fortified. It was, it, that's where they set the guards. That's where they you know, protected that gate because they knew that if the, if the gate was overtaken, then all the, what difference would it make how strong the wall was in another place if you had a weak gate? And so Brother Brown tells us and teaches us that the mind is a gateway to the soul. And how many believes that we're in the greatest battle ever fought this morning? And how many knows where that battle is being fought? It's the battle of the mind. That's the battlefield where Satan is fighting every, every believer. Now in the message of the greatest battle ever fought, Brother Brown said, that's your battleground. Back in your mind, he said, where the mind opens and the mind is a gate to the soul and your mind opens up and accepts the spirit or rejects the spirit and you can have a little consciousness, little feelings, little sensations and all these things. That's nothing to do with it. That's just little sensations and things. But when it comes to reality, your mind opens it up. Your mind either accepts it or rejects it. Is that right? See, it's your mind that opens up the door or closes the door. Now, if you see this, you got to go back to the, to the Garden of Eden because we know that, amen, the battle that started in heaven. How many knows this battle that I'm talking about started in heaven? Amen. But the battle that started in heaven, Brother Brown would call it the battle of angels. He said, but the battle of angels has become the battle of human beings. Amen. The battle of angel has come down to the earth now, and we're in that battle. Amen. But if we go back to the Garden of Eden, when Satan come to Eve, amen, where did he meet her at? He met her on the battlegrounds of her mind. And Eve conceived, conceived in the womb of her mind before she ever conceived in her literal womb. She had already accepted in her mind and conceived there first. Is that right? Amen. How did that happen? Because she left the fortification of the Word of God. Brother Brown said that God had fortified them behind the Word, but Eve stepped out from behind the Word, and when she did, she opened up her spirit. She opened up herself. Amen. And she stood, she stopped. That was the whole problem right there. Brother Brown, she, she stopped, and she stood still long enough and listened to the lie of the devil. Friends, I swear we're making our mistakes so many times is we're stopping long enough to listen to the lie of the devil. Let me encourage you young people. Amen. Fortify the gate of your mind. Amen. Turn off the internet. Amen. Don't even give a minute to this nonsense that you're hearing about this message. Don't even give a minute to listen to somebody. If somebody comes and tells you, amen, that this message ain't right or Brother Ram was a false prophet, you know what I do? I just shut that out, turn it off, walk away. It don't make no difference. Listen, friends, fortify yourself. Don't listen to that. There's so many other things to say, but what Eve done is she left the fortification of the word. And when she stepped out from behind that, she opened herself up. And Satan met her on the battlefield of her mind. Now listen, 
Brother Brown said the battle has raged since the day of the Garden of Eden. The battle in the human mind. Satan started it. And the battle raged when Eve opened up her mind to listen to her reasoning. Now, we know that being a triune being, we have body, spirit, soul. Now, there's five senses of the body, five senses of the spirit. And we, we, we know that these five senses are five inlets. It's a way that we contact. There's a way to contact the body. It's through, five, it's through the five senses. See, taste, smell, feel, and hear. So you have the five senses of the body. Then you have the five senses of the, uh, of the spirit, which would be uh, reason, memory, affection, conscience, imagination. Amen. These are the five senses of the spirit, and they're actually endless. Amen. Or I'll call it gates. Amen. That's what they are. It's endless. Amen. But there's only one sense of the soul. And we heard it preached last night. There's only, there's only one inlet in there. And that's either faith or doubt. There's either going to be one or the other. Amen. It's either going to be faith or it's going to be doubt. Is that right? Now listen to what Brother Brown said. And one little iota, amen, of God's word disbelieved caused all this trouble. Amen. And how are we going to get back, he said, by disbelieving the word? You can't do it. You got to shut off all these other things. You got to shut off conscience and memories and reasoning and all these and cast down reasoning. Amen. Don't reason about it at all. We just accept the word of God upon the basis that God said so. And that sets a stream between you and God. And every channel comes open between you and God. Amen. There's your battle. Amen. Right on the front line. And let me, and let, listen to what Brother Brown said. He said, and let's not come using a 22 rifle. He said, let's use an atomic bomb. Let's do the job right. Let's get God's atomic bomb. Amen. He said, what, what is it, Brother Branham? It's faith. Faith in his word. That's God's atomic bomb. And it blows sickness and devils right. Amen. To the right and to the left. He said, it annihilates them. It disintegrates everything that's ungodly. When the bomb of faith drops in there with the word of God behind it, it blows up every devil, every sickness, and every disease. I'm telling you, we got an atomic bomb this morning. Listen, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts, it exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In other words, what is Paul teaching us here? He's showing us, amen, that a man that has a new birth. Now let me just make something clear to you. This. Can y'all give me just a little bit up here? Uh, 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 let me just make this clear. I am not trying to preach to you a 10-step program of how to rule your spirit or try to you know, teach you some kind of psychology of how to overcome the, uh, 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 your own spirit. That's not what I'm preaching. I'm preaching that you got to be born again. And the only way you're going to rule your spirit, you can't do it at all. The only way your spirit will be ruled is by his spirit taking over in your, in your soul. Amen. That's the only way it's going to happen, friends. Amen. Listen, there ain't no 10-step programs. Amen. There's only one way, and that's by a new birth. And there's only one, one way to be born again, and that's by the spirit of God. Every birth is a mess. And there's three elements of a birth. That's water, blood, and spirit. Brother, that's how it was 2,000 years ago. And that's the same way this morning. There is still ain't but one prescription. And I believe it's Acts 2.38. Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
There ain't no substitute of the Holy Ghost. And I'm just old fashioned enough to believe that the way the Holy Ghost come the first time is the way it comes every time. And what it did then, it'll do the same now. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Amen. You say you're just trying to preach emotion. No, I'm telling you, it was more than emotion that they got on the day of Pentecost. Brother, it wasn't just an emotion that got them excited. Amen. But they were endued with power from on high. And them was a bunch of scaredy cats that walked up in a room hiding themselves, scared to death of a devil. Amen. Come walking out of there. Amen. So full of the power of God. It didn't just make them speak in tongues. It made them preach the gospel. It just didn't give them emotion. It gave them power to rule their spirit. It gave them power to overcome devils. It gave them power to cast demons out. Amen. They walked by the gate beautiful. They said, silver and gold have I none. But what I got, I'll give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, friends. And some people say, well, you know, I just don't like that bunch of screaming and hollering and stuff. <laughs> Amen. Like we had here last night. It's kind of like the man, you know, told Brother Brown, said, I get chill bumps. It scares me. I get, I get chill bumps. I, I don't like that. Brother Brown said, you'll freeze to death in heaven. This is the quietest place you're ever going to be. Man, this is the quietest place you're ever going to be. Listen, friends, we got so, uh, we, we saw the side of it where Brother Brown taught us and showed us it ain't in emotion. It ain't in shouting. It ain't in, and listen, friends, I believe all that and see all that. Amen. You can shout and not have it. You can speak in tongues and not have it. You can roll around the floor and not have it. Come on, friends. But sometimes, I'll just go back to a quote. Amen. The same prophet taught us all that, said this. He said, amen, I, amen. He said, what are we? We're them Acts 238, screaming, babbling, tongue-talking children. Amen. It's the only kind that the Word can produce. I'm not ashamed of a move of the Spirit of God. I'm not ashamed of somebody saying amen, shouting glory. I'm not ashamed, amen, of these young people, amen, coming to the altar. Amen, you say that's old-fashioned. It might be old-fashioned, but it still works. Hallelujah. And I just believe what we need is an old-fashioned, sin-killing, sky-blue, Holy Ghost-filled revival of the Most High God. I say pour it out, Lord. Send it down, Lord. We're hungry for it. We're kind for it. Hallelujah. We've had enough. Amen. Dead religion. Come on, friends. Hey, man, this ain't formalism. This, this message ain't dead. It's alive. Oh, my. Well, I'm going to get carried away in a little bit. If I take off running and I won't come back, I'll just go ahead and have church. Look around said, man that's been born again, Christ is on the control tower of his, of his soul. And so, that's why the prophet would say like this in the power of transformation. He said, now, he said, the living being has five senses to contact. The second, talking about the spirit, the outside body see, and then that see, taste, feel, smell, and hear. The inside body has love, conscience, and so forth, five senses, but inside of the inside, there's a control tower. And it's either God or Satan. You realize this morning that everything you're doing is being controlled by something. There's something that's influencing every decision you make. I, I, can I just preach to y'all a little while? Every time you get up and put on a pair of clothes, 
There's something that's influencing that decision. There's some power, amen, that's coming from somewhere that's influencing, amen, what you wear. Amen, I'm day this. Amen, you want to check and see where that influence is coming from? Take it back to the Word of God. Because the Word will tell you where that influence is coming from. And I'm day this, girls, if the dress is up here, that ain't coming from the Spirit of God. That's not coming from the Holy Ghost. If it's so tight you can't move in it, that was not influenced by the Spirit of God. Amen, if them heels are so high you can't walk, that didn't come from the Spirit of God. Can I just say what the prophet said? He said, you can't walk this road with them shoes on. Amen. Now you walk yourself right into hell and wear high heel shoes all you want, but you can't walk on this road. Somewhere or another, you're going to fall off. That didn't come from the Spirit of God because it don't line up with His Word. Oh, we preach on clothes. You know, some of the brothers was talking the other day. We preach on uh, clothesline. We usually leave the boys out of it. Now, I believe it's time around the message. We need to bring the boys back into it. Some of y'all need to realize that people that, that you go to church with are friends with you on Facebook. <laughs> well, praise God. I don't have Facebook, and I don't look at my wife's. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not going to preach against it and then... You know, say, well, glory to God, I don't have it, but then spend all my time on somebody else's. <laughs> it's like preaching against TV and then going down to the neighbors and watching it all the time. <laughs> but I will say this. Every once in a while, somebody just come and says, show me something. So you, <laughs> somebody in the church, somebody in, in our church, you know, something they put on Instagram or Facebook. And some of us need re- <laughs> I mean, I wonder where people are sometimes. We got to the place that our boys are wearing shorts again. And somehow we got it all worked out and justified that it's all right. It's all right if you're beside a pool. Who said that? You know, I, I don't know where we come up with this idea that when we go on vacation, we don't dress the same. Just because we get away from the church, we lower our standards. Or if we're down at the beach, you know, it don't matter. We can wear something a little different. We're on vacation after all. This is reason you can't never take a vacation of being a Christian. You don't never take a vacation of being a son of God. And I got the same standards if I'm in Louisiana, if I'm in North Carolina, amen, if I'm in Canada, if I'm in Africa, if I'm at the beach, or if wherever I am, I'm a son of God. Everything you do, every decision you make, every is coming from somewhere. It's an influence. Something's controlling that. Everything you read, everything you look at, listen, friends, because listen, that is coming through one of them gates. They had to have a gate in the city, but that gate had to be secure. That's why it was guarded. And everything that come in there had to pass through security. Because they knew that if the enemy come in the gate, once within, come on friends, because when the enemy would slip in the gate, once it got on the inside, the next thing you know, the whole city's captive. And you're wondering, how in the world did this happen? There's a lot of, there's a lot of Christians getting that place. Even they get down the road, and and, and, I, and and then before they know it, they're living in adultery, and their lives is all messed up, and they've lost their family, and they lost their their, their respect, and and, and 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 everything is gone, and they're standing there saying, "How did this happen?" And it all started with an old dirty book. Or it all started with just putting on one movie. And it had one cuss word in it. And he said, well, that's just one. It don't really matter that much. And the next one had three. And the next one had five. And after a while, you quit counting. And you don't even notice it anymore. And a woman can just be naked. And it don't even have an effect on you. And they got and, and there's homosexuals on it. And they're kissing one another. And they're pushing that in your face. And it bothered you one time. But it don't bother you no more. You know what happened? You open up a gate and you let the enemy in. And you have no rule over your spirit. And the walls fail. And the next thing you know, you're captive. Because 
because these are inlets. And what you see is an inlet into your spirit. You know what a real smart enemy, when they come to attack a walled city, they'll attack it from different sides. And while part of the army's over here attacking, attacking one gate, there's another part over here attacking another gate. And they'll unite the two powers together because they know if they can divide the, 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 the army within and they get some over here that's fighting on this gate and another group over here fighting, they got a greater chance to get into the city. And Satan will come and he'll attack the inlet of your, at the gate of your, your eyes. And then before you know it, he's over here attacking imagination. And, and what you see will unite with imagination. Or what you see will unite with memory. And you'll see something on a billboard and it will take you back to something you saw on some site somewhere that you had no business being on to start with. Amen. And it will unite that together. And the next thing you know, you go back in memory and then imagination takes over. And after, amen, just a little while, your whole spirit's broke down. Your walls are falling down. Your fortification is falling down. And the enemy just walks right in. Listen, friends, it's a real devil. We can't kid ourselves. And I know this. I'm, I, I, I'm not mad at y'all. I hope you don't think I am. I'm not. I love you. I love you. And I realize that you're fighting battles that even I didn't fight when I was your age. Because there's never been a time on this planet that, that Satan has had more access to the channels, to the inlets of, uh, 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 of your spirit than he does right now. Because it's everywhere. You, you can't get away from it. Listen, it's like I told my church at home 100 years ago. 100 years ago, Satan had a whole lot less to work with and through. A man left home in the morning, went out in the field. He'd probably be out in the field all day long by himself. Just plowing behind a mule. Yeah. If, if, the, if Satan was going to use something to bother that man, it had to be the mule. Yeah. And he had him a good whip. And that, when that mule started out, he just beat the fire out of it. Yeah. And, and could you imagine how frustrating it was to the devil that he had to wait all day long for that man to come back home just so he could anoint his wife. <laughs> she couldn't pick up the cell phone and call him in the field. She couldn't send him no text. She couldn't say, what in the world are you doing? Why are you five minutes late? She couldn't do none of that. He had to wait all day long just for him to get back home so he could anoint his wife to, to bother him or anoint the husband to bother the wife. He just Satan has so many less channels to work through. Amen, but then the generation we live in, we carry it around in our hand. It's on every billboard we look at. Amen, we got radios in our car. Amen, there's so many channels that's opened up. All it takes is just one push of a button, and you can leave, amen, from a gospel station to rock and roll. And, and, and I'm going to go ahead and preach anyhow. Sometimes you don't even have to push the button, but the rock and roll has invaded the gospel station. And so much of what they call gospel music ain't nothing gospel about it. It might have some good lyrics, amen, but it ain't nothing, amen, but something that the devil has took and converted over. And listen, friends, it's all to catch you and to lead you, amen. After all, after a while, you won't know the difference between pop and gospel. Well, praise God anyhow. And there's so many channels opened up and say well bless God we don't have no TV in our house you don't have to most of you's carrying around in your pocket <laughs> oh, I hope. tell you one thing bless God sometimes I'm gonna just I know there's some parents here y'all please forgive me I don't get mad at me but I'll tell you one thing we need to wake up because some of us say 
Well, I trust my kids. I do too. I don't trust the devil at all. <laughs> Amen. I don't trust him none. And listen, you can't even pump gas without Satan invading your mind. Because when you pull up to a gas pump, take the when you're paying for it, there's a TV screen on half of them now. And while you're sitting there pumping gas, there's something on that on that tele, on that television. It's coming from another dimension, as Brother Wayne was preaching last night. That's something coming from another dimension, coming into this dimension, and it'll have an influence upon your life. But listen, friends, that's the powers of darkness. That's the powers of Satan. But I say this, if Satan could use a, the fourth dimension and so invade a world until he could completely take it over and he could change the minds of the people and lead them into total insanity with a perverted spirit, how much more could Almighty God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, come through the atmosphere? Listen, friends, even God's voice to speak through dimensions this morning. When Jesus went to the, labor, uh, the grave of Lazarus, Lazarus, amen, spirit had been left and his soul was on a journey. He wasn't even in the same dimension. But when Jesus spoke and said, Lazarus, come forth, his voice pierced through the dimensions and went and found Lazarus and called him. Brother, if he can do it, then he can do it now. I believe that one word from the Son of Man this morning. He can break through every barrier. He can break through every amen, atmosphere, through every demonic spirit, and call you by name. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. My, y'all must have to forgive me. I got, I'm preaching and I don't know where I'm at. So, uh, well, praise God. Listen, friends. Well, listen to what Brother Brandon said. He talked about how many believes that we're spiritual astronauts. Brother Brandon preached a message countdown. He, talk, he compared that this is astronaut age. We're not living in airplane age. I don't want to get into all that, but airplane age, you know, was a Pentecostal. That's why they were up and down and up and down and up and down. <laughs> Save one day and not the next. But we're not in the airplane age. We're in the astronaut age. But Brother Brown said, but an astronaut has to have a control tower. And he said, there's something controlling that astronaut. It's not him doing it. But there's something controlling him from another place. Amen. And from a control tower, his every action is being controlled. Amen. And Brother Brown said, and so is the spiritual astronaut has a control tower. And it's the Holy Ghost that's in him. That's controlling him. A tower of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Brother, I still believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said that's the control tower. It keeps him in control by the word. Not in a bunch of fanaticism or some whooped up nonsense. But thus saith the Lord. And it's always under control. He's got a control tower. That's the Holy Ghost. And the power of the Holy Ghost induces him to move out. And it brings the achievement of God. The power of the Holy Ghost. Listen friends. You can't rule your spirit but God can. You can't overcome Amen, but he can. Amen, you can. Amen, you can. Uh, 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 listen, there's an enemy and the devil is real. And there's enticing spirits out there. Amen, and if you're not sealed by the Spirit of God, Satan's going to get you. I'm telling you, there ain't no substitute to it. Amen, there ain't no two or three ways about it. Amen, you got to get born again. And there ain't no halfway doing it. Amen. So many times, Brother Brown said, Amen. A lot of people, Amen, get discouraged and get defeated. Amen. And they have so many problems. He said, The problem many times is they just never went far enough. They just never got deep enough. Maybe they come so far as justification. Maybe they come so far as sanctification. But, Brother, we got to go all the way. We got to come through justification, sanctification, all the way to the baptism of the Holy Ghost where Christ Himself can live on the inside, taking control from within. 
And that's the reality. That's why Jesus said, first doctrine he ever preached, you must be born again. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Without it, there's no, you'll have no rule over your spirit. And without rule over your spirit, you're like a city without walls. But you know, maybe, uh, you know, just this is just how I think. But if a man that don't have no rule over his spirit is like a city without walls, then if a man had rule over his spirit, would not he be like a city with walls? So you understand what I'm saying? If a man don't have rule over his spirit, he's like a city broken down without walls. In other words, he's opened up. He has no fort- He has no defense. Amen. The enemy just has his way with that man. Amen. But if a man has rule over his spirit, would he not be like a city with walls? Fortified. Amen. Let me just say this. Amen. The, 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 a, a city with walls had a great advantage. And they would build a city. In that time, they'd look for the, you know, they just wouldn't build a city anywhere. But they looked for, the, because they knew they were going to be under attack. They knew that at some point, there was going to be an enemy come to attack that city. So they looked for a place that's set up on a hill so that they would have an advantage that they would be able to see for, for a distance. And then they would put walls around that city. They'd put towers on the walls. They'd put watchmen in the towers. And then watchmen was in the towers looking out. Amen. What was their purpose? They were up there and they were scanning all the time. And they were searching out that they could see an enemy from a far distance. So that they wouldn't be overtaken unawares. In other words, that's what the purpose of the watchman was. And he set himself in a high place that he could look out in a far distance and he could warn. And when he saw the enemy coming from afar, he could sound the alarm and everybody could prepare for battle. Listen, friends, that's why I believe the message teaches us you need a pastor. We need a fivefold ministry. Don't you listen to the devil. He's trying to break down your defenses. If he's telling you, you don't need a pastor, you don't need a home church, you don't need a five-fold ministry, that's the enemy trying to break down your defenses. You need a pastor. And he's a watchman in a tower looking to the horizon. He's looking afar off, and he can see an enemy approaching before you ever know anything about it. And that's why he sounds the alarm. And you prepare yourself for attack. You see, there's a great advantage of a walled city. Because it's fortified. And when the enemy comes, first thing, first task he's got to do is break through that wall. And he knows the only chance he's got of taking that city over is he's got to break through the wall. But you got a great advantage if you're fighting from a wall. First of all, you're already over your enemy. You're already in a higher place than where he is. If you're fighting from a wall, your enemy is already under you. Hallelujah. Brother, let me tell you something, young people. The battle might be hot, but if you're fighting from a wall, in other words, if you done got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you done been born again by the Spirit of God, I believe some of you was getting fortified last night. Some of you was filling in the breaches last night. Amen. Was strengthening the gates last night. Amen. And you're not fighting the same battle this morning as you was last night. Because last night, you were standing toe-to-toe with the devil on the same level he was. And he was overtaking you here and overtaking you there. And you're fighting by yourself. And you didn't have no help. Amen. But this morning, because you built some walls last night, you're standing in another place. You're standing in a higher place. You're fighting from another position. And your enemy is beneath you. Hallelujah. And I say, that's where he's supposed to be. Hallelujah. When you're fighting from above, 
you got an advantage. I don't know if y'all know this, but it's a lot easier to throw a rock down than it is up. And you can throw a lot bigger rock down than you can throw one up. Come on, friends. And it's a whole lot easier to shoot an arrow at something if you got a shield in front of you. You see, your enemy is standing in an open field. Come on, church. If you're in a if you're in a walled city, if you're fighting from a walled city, they build that city and they tear down all the trees from around the walls because they didn't want nothing out there that the enemy could hide behind. Amen. The enemy is in an open field, but you're standing behind the wall. You're standing by the behind the shield of faith. You're standing behind the word of God. Amen. You're standing in a position, and it's a lot easier to shoot an arrow when you got a wall in front of you. You know what? And the only way they could do it, if they was trying to take a walled city, they, they was, uh, there was only a few things they could do. They just, and the most of the time, they would focus, they would focus their energy on the gates. And they'd use battle rams. And they were constantly, listen, that's why Satan is constantly attacking your gates. He's going to attack you in the five senses of the flesh. What you see, what you hear, what you feel. Come on. He's going to attack the five inlets of your spirit. Amen. Reasoning, conscience, imagination, all these things. That's where his attack is. And he's constantly, amen, ramming it. And ramming it. And ramming it. And they don't give up. And he just keeps on. And they just ram it. If they don't break it, they back up and ram it again. Amen. Just back up and ram it again. Amen. But that's why, amen, they had a place on that wall above that gate. And they have some soldiers up there. And, they, and, and when they was ramming that gate and ramming that gate, they'd stand up above. And they'd just take great big old stones. Amen. How many knows a stone is a revelation? I believe some of you got some revelation last night. Amen, you gathered up some stones. Some of them was great big old stones. Amen, you pulled them up there on top of the wall. And as the enemy's ramming that gate, they just take two or three of them, just grab that stone and just roll it over. And that stone just fall off the wall and fall right down on the head of them devils that's ramming that gate. Hallelujah. Amen. If that didn't work, they just take hot buckets of oil. Amen. They get them on the fire and get them real hot. And they take that hot oil and they just pour it over the wall. And pour it all over the head of them devils. Oh, brother, that's what we need tonight. It's some hot oil that's real good and hot with the fire of the Holy Ghost. And just take it and pour it all over the head of every devil. And when he rams the gate, just pour the oil on it. And when he rams the gate, just drop a stone on him. Glory to God. You're fighting from an advantage point. Oh, hallelujah. You know, even the devil gets mad too. Say, don't, don't kid yourselves. We got the devil so mad right now. He can't even see straight. Oh, yeah. I believe we got him on the run, too. You know what I found? That when you get the devil on the run, the best thing to do is keep him on the run. Amen. I believe that when you get the devil on the run, just keep him on the run. I believe we got him on the run. And you know what? Sometimes as they was... As they was uh, attacking that city, you know, and after a while they got tired of them rocks being dropped on their head and hot oil being poured all over them. They'd retreat. Don't worry, they'd come back. They'd retreat a little while and lick their wounds a little bit. They'd get back here and start talking about, this ain't as easy as we thought. This city ain't quite like the last one. Don't you know the devil, don't you know demons have conversations about y'all? Don't you know he go, they go and have conversations and say, you know what? Every young person I've come, every 16-year-old boy I've, I've encountered has fell for pornography. Every 16-year-old boy I've encountered has fell for that lust 
spirit. Every every 16-year-old girl I've come in contact with has been affected by the fashions of this world. And every tactic that I've used has been so affected in this area, in this age group, and these amen. But there's something different about them, them kids down there at that camp in Louisiana. I, I, I go to them with the same tactics that I used over here. But it just ain't working. It ain't having the same effect. You know why? You fortify. You're like a walled city. There's another power that's ruling on the control tower of your heart. The enemy retreats for a little while and they go back and have a good conversation, you know. But you know what? You know what the you know what you're do what they're doing in the city while the enemy's over here t- talking about their defeat? Licking their wounds, trying to come up with another, another battle plan. Because I want to tell you, Satan's going to come back. He'll just change his tactics a little bit. He'll be back. But you know what the best thing for you to do while he's doing that? What they would do in that time is prepare themselves for the next attack. Amen. Listen, friends, in peace times, that's the time to prepare for war. Amen. Every good general knows that. Amen. In a time of peace, that ain't the time to sit down and relax. That ain't the time to quit reading your Bible. Come on. When everything's going good, amen, you find people, amen, I know there's pastors in here that's going to enjoy this part, but when everything's going good, you find people don't have to come to church. And everything's going right in the world, and they just lay out on Sunday night and Wednesday night, amen, and after all, everything going so good and they, you know they got all the money that they can have and they, they're taking nice vacations and, 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 and their kids are stars in sports and everything's just going so great amen and, 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 that, and they just lay out of church when everything's going good that ain't the time to lay out of church that ain't the time to quit reading your bible amen that ain't the time to quit listening to tapes yeah I believe in listening to tapes amen that ain't the time amen listen but in a time of peace that's the time to prepare for war. When the enemy has retreated a little while, that's a good time to gather up some more stones. To, oh, hallelujah. That's a good time to heat some more oil up. Get it real good and hot because you know he's coming back. And when he gets back, you're going to be ready. Hallelujah. Listen, when the devil gets mad, the devil gets mad, I, I'm out of time. I, y'all forgive me. I call, I call, brother. Listen, let me tell y'all, y'all something right now. I got to make something right. I got to tell Brother Wayne I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I, I kind of put a little slang out there about him being long winded. He's not. I preach just as long as he does. And so I guess we're, well, let me just shut up before I mess up the apology. <laughs> he, he is, a, he's, he's one of my very best friends. And I really thank God for him. He's helped me through a lot of trials. And, and uh, I tell you what, there's, there's real value in true friendship. I, I, I just, I know I'm getting off my subject now, but I've been studying what the Bible says about it. and You know, the Bible says that a rich man has many friends. But even the poor man, he, but they said the poor, even their neighbor hates them. That's paraphrasing, but that's what the Bible says. But you know what? A real true friend will be your friend in good times and be your friend in bad times. If you got a dollar, if you don't have nothing, he'll still be your friend. That's the kind of friend Brother Wayne is, and I appreciate that. So I had to make that right. Before, before he takes the mic tonight. <laughs> it's dangerous to, to, uh, to pick on people that's getting ready to get a microphone. <laughs> but listen, you know why Satan hates meetings like this? It's because he knows that there's hearts being fortified. Go read the book of Nehemiah in the fourth chapter. Amen. How many believe this is an hour of restoration? How many believe this is a message of restoration? Did you can go read Nehemiah the fourth chapter when they were rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. When the enemy heard that the walls were being built and the breaches were being stopped up and the gates were being repaired, amen, they become very wroth. They become very angry. 
and they set themselves against the children of Israel. And they began to attack and fight, amen, with everything they could to stop the building of the walls. Amen. But Nehemiah said, but nevertheless, we set our prayers toward God. And he said, in a time of trouble, amen, what did they do, brother? They took a sword in one hand and a tool in the other. And they said, there ain't no devil going to stop it. We're going to build these walls, even if we had to do it under attack. This is a message of restoration. But it's in the middle of an invasion. Satan's attacking from every side. But it don't make no difference. Because the difference is, we got a promise. And God said, I will restore, saith the Lord. The walls are going to be built. Even in a time of trouble, we're going to build every wall. We're going to close up every breach. We're going to fortify every gate. How are we going to do it? With a sword in one hand and a tool in the other. Hallelujah. Brother, there's going to be young people get deliverance in this meeting. Say, how are we going to do it? With a sword in one hand and a tool in the other. If we have to fight a devil over here and pray for somebody over here, we'll do just that. But there ain't nothing going to stop the building of these walls. Hallelujah. For this is the Lord's doing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me yeah. tell you something, church. You know, several years ago, I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh, God, I'm trying. But a couple years ago, uh, my wife and I, she's from St. Augustine, and uh, we went down to see some of her family and um, while we were there, we um, we went around, and, you know, took a little tour of the, you know, it's a real old city and a lot of history, a lot of neat things. There's a fort there. I forget the name of the fort, but I forget important things. I remember unimportant things, but I forget important things. I don't know what the name of it is. I know where it's at. And but that fort has never been conquered. In history. It's never been taken by force. It's amazing. They have never conquered that fort. And you know what I thought was so amazing about it? Is they said a lot of times in battle. When the ships would set out and shoot cannonballs into the walls of that fort. A lot of times the cannonballs would wedge into the wall. And they just, the wall would stop it. So it couldn't get through but it just stopped the ball and it would just you know, sink in there and it'd stay right there. And they said that at night, they would go out and dig the cannonballs out of the walls of that fort. And the next day, they'd load them back in their cannons and shoot them back at the enemy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Really, I'm telling you this. Amen. I, let me just tell you what the prophet said. Amen. You are an invincible army. Can I say something this morning? This bride is an unconquered bride. She has never been taken by force. Let me say that again. Amen. Our God has never lost a battle. He has never been taken by force. He is an unconquered God. Brother Ben said, he's unconquered by traditions. He's unconquered by creeds. He's unconquered by dogmas. We're unconquered by Satan's eating this morning. We're unconquered by the spirits of Laodicea. This bride is no lukewarm by any means. We're not a cold form of church. We're on fire with the fire of the Holy Ghost. We're not a bunch of beat up, discouraged, head hung over, halfway making it Christians that can't hardly live to tomorrow. Amen, but we're overcomers. We're victorious. We're mighty in battle. Hallelujah. And everything the devil shoots at us, we just dig it out and send it right back his way. Hallelujah. And when he tries to put condemnation on your head, and when he comes tomorrow, and after this meeting's over, three weeks from now, and he comes back, oh, but what you done? Don't you remember who you were? You just take that, that cannonball and dig it out of the wall and send it right back to him. Say, devil, 
That's who I was, but that's not who I am. Put it back where it belongs. Put it back on the head of the devil. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to have a shouting fit. I believe in it. Oh, my. Let me just read what Brother Brown said. I got I to gotta quit. I sure don't want to, but I got to. Revelation of Jesus Christ, Brother Brown said, remember this. Listen now. Because this is what Brother Wayne was teaching, preaching to you last night. Listen, brother, I believe what Brother Wayne said. And let me say the same this morning. This ain't a pet rally. I'm not trying to excite you or just work you up. I'm trying to give you ammunition, fortification. Amen, amen, that you can realize. Because if you realize who you are, if you really realize who you are, and the value that God has placed on you. And you come to the revelation of who you are. You will be an invincible army. Let me just read the quote. Now remember this. Christ in the true church is a continuation of the book of Acts. But the book of Revelation shows how that the Antichrist spirit will come into the church and defile it. Making it lukewarm. Formal and powerless. You know what Brother Brown said? God hates a powerless Religion. I'm not interested in religion. I want the power of God. He said, it exposes Satan. That's why Satan hates. That's why he hates meetings like this. That's why he'll do everything he can to stop you from coming. That's why he'll do everything he can to stop you from entering into the service. He'll try his best to hide himself deep within your spirit. Amen. Scared to death. Don't you know demons are Brother Timothy read the quote at the beginning? Satan is afraid. He hates being. You know that's why he hated this message, the ministry of this prophet, because not one devil could walk into one of his meetings without being exposed. And every time they come into a service where he was, he'd call them out by name. Satan hates that. He cannot stand that. Amen. But how many believe he's the same God this morning? Yeah. Amen. He's the same God right here in this building this morning. He still knows what your name is. He still knows what you're going through. He still knows what the conversations you had. Amen. Last night and yesterday and the day before that. Listen, brother. Amen. God is still God. Yeah. I've seen that. Several years ago, you know, I, I, cause I'm just going to be honest with you. I, 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 always, I always dreamed of what it would be like to be in the meetings, to what it had been like to sit there and hear the prophet of God preach and even uh, had people in my family that were called out under the, under the discernment. And I always thought, what, what faith that would give, you know, and how it would be so nice to, to have a prophet call you by name. What, how that would just, you know, if you're going through something and you really needed a touch from God and you just come into service and, and hear a man stands up there and begins to call your name and tell you what's wrong and what you're praying for. I mean, how that would just really, oh, man, that would so energize you. Yeah. And, I, and I'm just being honest. I, I've, I've dreamed of that. I thought, man, that would be so, so I just wish I could have been there. Yeah. And then... One day I was listening to a tape, and I heard Brother Brown start talking about, he said, he said, in the, uh, talking about the seals, and he said, the opening of the word and things, he said, and the mystery is calling out the names. He said, it, it was in the book, he said, it's being revealed, it's calling out the names. And he said, it's not calling like Ormond Neville or, 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 or Lee Bell or what, what the names that he used there, I can't remember, but he said, it's not like that, but the mysteries is calling out the names, amen, of the people. And I begin to realize, amen, listen, I, ne I never heard my name called under the second pool. He never deserved me. I wasn't sitting there. I never heard, had him tell me, amen, where I come from and what my address was and what was wrong with me. Amen, I never heard that like that. Amen, but I, one day I did hear my name under the third pool of ministry of that prophet. I heard him call my name. Amen. The mystery called the name. 
Amen. And he told me where I come from. It just so happened I come from the mind of God. Hallelujah. He told me what was wrong with me. The problem was I was just in the wrong hands. The devil had a hold of my life. I need a little fine tuning. I needed to be born again. I needed to see Gene to be clicking by the Holy Ghost. He told me where I was going. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And brother, you talk about faith. You talk about, amen, something energizing, some within me. When a prophet of God said, you come from God and you're going back to God. You was a part of God all along. Hallelujah. I'm glad y'all like shotgun preaching because that's what I just did. <laughs> Let me try to finish this quote. I got to get, get out of here. He said, remember Christ in the true church is a continuation of the book of Acts. It exposes Satan revealing his works and attempted. I love how it says, Attempted. He ain't going to do it. It's just an attempt. The attempted destruction of God's people and discrediting God's word. Right down to the time he's cast into the lake of fire. He fights that. He cannot stand it. He knows that the people get a true revelation of the true church and what she is and what she stands for and that she can do the greater works. She will be an invisible army. And Satan will be just as powerless before her as he was the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. And do you know, Brother Brown said, and Jesus come and was tempted like you, and he said, he used the word to prove to you that you also could use the same word and overcome the same devil by the same power. Yeah. Let me just tell you what. What Brother Brown said, how can I overcome? He said, this is what real overcoming is. He said, it's to recognize that Satan is a real devil. He said, he said, there's so many people today that saying that Satan is not real. He said, but he is real. Let me just tell you this morning, I, I'm preaching a positive message, but I'm not trying to convince you you don't have an enemy. Because you do. And he's real. And Brother Brown said, amen, overcoming is this, is to realize and recognize that Satan is a real devil. Amen. He said, he said to recognize that, he said, he said, and you must recognize him real. You must know that he's against you. You must know that he's against you. That's important. That's an important part. You got to know that that enticing spirit, that spirit of lust, that spirit of, 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 of fashion, that, that spirit, whatever it is you're battling with, that spirit that the enemy is using to attack, you got to realize that's against you. It ain't for you. It ain't going to help you. It's against you. He said you got to recognize that it's real and that he's against you. He said, and you, and then to overcome, you must recognize that the God in you is greater and mightier than he is. The one that's in you has already overcome him. And by his grace, you are more than a match for him. He said, amen. That's real overcoming when you recognize Amen. Now, you see, the Bible says, David said as we read, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion. How many know Zion's the bride? Amen. Which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. You cannot be removed. I love that. Do you know that if your name's on the Lamb section of the book of life, it cannot be removed. There ain't nothing that you ever done or ever could do to take that name off the book. 
And do you realize some of you sitting here fighting a battle with the devil this morning saying, well, I went too far. I went too far. I crossed the line. Listen, friends, if your name was on that book, there ain't no way you could do it. There ain't no way you could cross the line. There ain't no way you could go too far. Amen. There ain't no way you could get out of the reach of God. God's arm's not short this morning. He can reach you where you are in the lowest part of the hell. Amen. In the deepest depths of sin. God can reach down and deliver you. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forevermore. God is our defense. God is our defense. Musicians come. I'm trying to close. I ain't done, but I'm running out, I run out of time. I know how you feel, brother. <laughs> but you know the only way the only way, if an enemy attacks a walled city, if they can't break through that wall, the only hope they have is to starve the people out. You know that. You know that's the next tactic they'll use. If they can't break through the wall, what they'll do is cut off the supplies. So they they just surround the city, and they cut off anything going into that city. And they know if they can do that, if they can cut the supplies off, then they'll just simply starve the people out. You understand? That's, and that's the tactic. If they can't break through the defense, then the next thing they'll do is try to just starve the people out. And they'll, and they'll, they'll surround that city, cut off all the supplies. But I got some good news for y'all. In this city, there's hidden manna. In this city, we got a meal barrel that don't never run out. We got a supernatural God working a paradox. Amen. And it comes from within. Amen. The water comes from within. Amen. All the resources is coming from within. We're not, amen, dependent upon an outside source to supply us. Amen. To feed us. Amen. To sustain us. Amen. But that that we have need of is already in the city. Brother Rev said, when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you have everything you have need of. Amen. From Eden all the way back to Eden. All the way through life's journey, you got it all within you. We can't be starved out. Amen. We can't be pushed out. We can't be moved out. Amen. We're fortified. We're strengthened. And there's an inexhaustible fountain of life. The most important thing to have need of in that time is water. But there is a river of life flowing out of me. And Jesus said, He that believeth in me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And David said it like this, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. There is a river. The streams thereof shall make glad. Who ever heard of a city being glad? Amen, but I see it right here. You know why? Because there's a river. And it's flowing through this morning. Streams over here and streams over there. Amen. It's putting a smile on your face. Amen. It's putting a song in your heart. Amen. It's making you clap your hands. It's making you shout victory. Amen. What is there's a river? Amen. The streams there make glad the city of God. Listen to what he said. The holy place of the tabernacles of the most high. And God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall be her help from that right early. The, heath, the heathens raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Let's stand to our feet this morning and give God glory. Let me just close by saying this. You know, there's a natural Babylon and there's a mystery Babylon. But let me say this, it being that city representing everything that's evil, every false god and 
every idol that's ever been worshipped, every false religion that's come right out of that city was the seat of Satan. It moved from a, a literal city into a, 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 a mystery Babylon. It's very much a reality even to today. But just as natural Babylon was destroyed, and it ain't never been built back, there's coming an end to mystery Babylon. And the Bible says Babylon has fallen, has fallen the great one. And her destruction shall come to her in one hour. She's going to fall. She's going to be destroyed. She's going to lay in ruins. But you know there's something amazing about Jerusalem. You can search all through this Bible. And you can see how that, that city was established. But then enemies would come and attack. And because of sin and different reasons, God would allow it to be overtaken. But do you know in every case it was rebuilt? It never remained in ruins. I don't care how many times they tore it down. It always was built back. And they tear it down, but it was built back. And it might fall again, but it was built back. Amen. And there is a promise that even in the new heaven and the new earth, Jerusalem will still remain. You believe that? And how many can see yourself? We're not Babylon. Amen, but we're a part of Jerusalem. And I don't care how many times the devil knocks you down, you're going to stand back up. I don't care how many times you fall, you're going to get back up. I don't care how many times the enemy comes and overtakes, you're going to come back up. You know why? Because your representative is a city of truth, a city of righteousness, a city of peace, an eternal place from the eternal God. That's who we are this morning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's sing it. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Say, what, what are you talking about? I'm one of them. Acts 2.38. Holy Ghost filled. Devil stomping. Sin killing. Sons of God. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm so glad I can say I'm one of them.
One time he was preaching in our church and he had done said G for Jesus so much, he got ready to spell Jesus. And he said, G, E. <laughs> hey, Amen. G for Jesus. Well, that devil don't like no praising God around here. The devil don't like no praising God around here. But I don't care what the devil don't like. I'm gonna praise him with all of my might. Devil don't like no praising God around here. Well, that devil don't like no praising God around here. Oh, I don't like no praising God around here. We don't care what the devil don't like. We gonna praise him with all. son and daughter of God that means I'd never belong to the devil therefore I'm not the devil's dish rag I'm not something for him to be waving around and looking what I've done and look at how I've destroyed this life I'm not his dish rag this morning I'm not the dead fashion statement this morning come on somebody I was just reading where the prophet of God would blast and he would speak out against the women in their uh, weenie dog outfits. I never thought it would be the point where we'd have to tell our brothers not to wear those kind of clothes. But it's slipping into the house of God. But I am not the devil's 
fashion statement. I don't belong to the devil. hear the prophet of God speak time after time about our sisters with makeup on and being worried God I don't belong to the devil I'm not one of Satan's fallen stars I'm not the devil's trophy I am the trophy of God's amazing grace this morning you ought to look that Look that devil square in the eyes and say, I don't belong to you. I belong to God. I don't care what the devil don't like. Boy, that's a good southern song right there. I know northern folks are having, maybe having a hard time understanding that, but that is southern that language. I don't care what the devil don't like. I'm going to praise him with all my might. I'm going to give God glory. I'm going to let my life speak glory and honor. This ain't just about a pep rally, as has been said. This is about lives being changed. To where you have the strength to go back home and look that devil in the eye. Say, look here, old boy. That old man that was here about three or four days ago, he don't live here no more. He don't live here no more. I've been changed. I've been reborn. There's walls here now, protection. There's a Holy Ghost here that'll keep you back. I belong to Jesus. How many can say that this morning? I belong to Jesus. I belong to him. Maybe this morning you've heard the word. The word's challenged us this morning. The devil may have been walking all through your life and causing, as a Nehemiah, a sand ballot. You look at the meaning of that. It's actually speaking about Satan. And Sam Bella has been walking through here telling you you can't overcome. You can't do this. You can't do that. You're never going to be nobody. You're, you're never going to be the Christian. That you can't do that. No, you can't, re no, you can't put that there. All you got to do is take a rock and start putting it in place. You put the word of God in its place. It'll keep the devil out of your life. Put another rock, add another stone, keep building the walls. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Josh. Amazing. Wonderful message this morning. Challenge you. You don't have to let the devil walk all through your life. You don't have to let him have his way. But there's one king of this heart. And that's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Let's just go ahead and praise him right now. Just lift your hands and say, yes, Lord, I belong to you, Jesus. I belong to you, God. I'll give my life to you, Lord Jesus. I surrender all. I give it to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's sing now, thank you, in the key of G. I give myself away. I give myself away. You make, when you came here, was giving your mind to other things. Your body to other things. But why don't you just for a moment say, God, I give myself to you. I yield my members to you, Jesus. Oh, my, I'm just feeling, just settling me in here. You know where the devil's been walking through your life. Put the word of God there. Place it in its right place. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Lord, I'm going to give myself to you. 
give myself away. Hallelujah. I give myself away. So you, my life is not my own. Myself, myself to you. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. But to you I belong. I give myself. I give myself. Oh, my life is not my own. My life is not my own. I give myself to you. I know, Lord, your plan for me is right, and I'm willing to fulfill. I submit to you, my King. Come and be my everything. I'm coming to you again. Lord, here I Bro. 